Southern California Orthopedic Institute presents A Patient's Guide to Arthroscopic Shoulder Surgery. Well, greetings, and uh, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Steve Snyder. I'm an arthroscopic shoulder surgeon, actually trained as an orthopedic surgeon, but uh, chosen many years ago to specialize in shoulder surgery and specifically arthroscopy. Uh, most of you uh, that are seeing this video have decided that you will uh, require a arthroscopic shoulder surgery to help uh, remedy a painful problem or disability that you're having with your shoulder. And the purpose of this short video will be to introduce you not only to my shoulder team, but to give you some idea about some of the things we'll be doing in surgery what arthroscopy is, and some of the questions that people often ask post-op. First of all, when we do shoulder arthroscopy, uh, it's always done in the operating room on the fourth floor of this building. We call that uh, COSI, or Center for Arthroscopic Surgery. Uh, we have four anesthesiologists that we work with, and I always use the same four. Uh, they're experts in outpatient anesthesia, and specifically shoulder surgery. Uh, you'll meet the anesthesiologist uh, with a phone call the night before surgery and certainly when you uh, register for surgery the day of the operation. Uh, the other people you'll meet are the, the nurses and the techs that will be taking care of you. A typical situation is you'll, you'll check into the uh, outpatient department the day before, register your paperwork, sign your papers, and the nurses will give you instructions. Uh, the day of surgery, you come to the operating room, uh, check in with uh, the uh, technician at the front desk, and then you'll be taken back to the uh, preparation area. The nurses will again go over all your paperwork and ask you probably for the tenth time if you have any allergies or taking any medicines or have you eaten or had anything to drink since midnight. It's absolutely critical that you uh, refrain from eating or drinking unless given uh, direct uh, permission from the anesthesiologist uh, anything after midnight because uh, that adds to the risk of surgery or the possibility of uh, having uh, an, an aspiration problem. The other thing is uh, wear loose-fitting clothing so that after surgery when we put your arm in the sling you'll be able to uh, uh, wear that uh, without uh, any particularly uh, problems putting that on. Uh, one thing I always tell people is uh, bring a little bit of patience when you come to surgery. Uh, we always start the first patient exactly on time. We're never a minute late. But we can never tell precisely to the minute or sometimes even to the half hour when the case will be finished. When we put the scope in the shoulder, uh, we're then required to fix everything we can. It's not like going to the beauty shop or even the dentist uh, where things can be planned pretty well. We'll do the same for your surgery as we do for all the surgeries, but sometimes patients expect uh, to have their surgery precisely at the minute that they uh, have on their paper and uh, it just doesn't happen. So bring a nice book or a magazine uh, and um, uh, expect to, uh, to have surgery as soon as is uh, possible. Another thing I think that is important uh, is that you understand that this is surgery. It's shoulder surgery. Uh, I always tell people it's not brain surgery or heart surgery, but, but it is shoulder surgery and there are potential risks. Although the risks are minimal, uh, they are uh, potential problems with things like infection, anesthesia risk, perhaps nerve injury, blood clots. Uh, failure of the operation, uh, if the stitches are placed in and, and uh, the shoulder gets moved too quickly, the stitches can pull out or break. If we uh, implant anchors, uh, those anchors, uh, if, uh, if pulled too quickly or if the bone is too soft, can be dislodged, although that's very, very rare. Less than one out of a thousand uh, uh, have that problem, but it's important to understand that it is real surgery. Uh, another question people ask is, uh, how do we know what went on in surgery and who's doing the operation? I think it's important for you to understand that I am your surgeon. I will do the operation, but I can only uh, do the operation with the assistance of a, a trained expert. Uh, you know that we have fellows in my group. 
fellows are fully trained orthopedic surgeons who come and spend a year with us to specialize in shoulder arthroscopy and sports medicine. I have five fellows a year, one for two and a half months at a time, and you'll meet the fellow when you come to the pre-op visit. The fellow will hold the scope for me. He or she will uh, retrieve the sutures when I, when I pass them. They'll assist me like any uh, first-class assistant would do in surgery. I need the fellow because I can't do it alone. If it wasn't for the fellow, then I'd have to have a, a, a PA or a nurse assistant. So the fellow will be there. I will be the surgeon. I'll be there for the entire time when you're asleep. Um, I will make a video recorded um, tape of your surgery and I'll give you a copy that you can choose to watch if you want uh, on a DVD. Now one thing that's important, uh, the DVD will not play on your home entertainment center. It'll only play on a PC, not a Mac. Uh, it's the way the compression's done on the, on the surgical system and I really don't have any control of that. On the video, I'll explain to you as clearly as I can exactly what the problem is in the shoulder. I'll take you on a tour of your own shoulder and show you the anatomy, show you the steps of surgery, and show you the final result. After surgery, you'll have some band-aids and a dressing on your shoulder. We'll go over that in a minute. But you'll also have a bruise on your shoulder. Everybody gets a bruise. Part of it is from the little incisions we make to put the tools in, but another very important part is from the bone marrow that we will uh, we will have um, uh, um, from the uh, shoulder after the surgery. We'll poke some little holes we call bone marrow vents in the bone, and that allows the bone marrow to come out and uh, and give new blood supply to the healing tissues. That'll also cause a bruise on the skin, and so please don't be alarmed by that. After surgery, there are certain things that um, that you need to watch for. Fever, uh, everybody gets a little fever for the first day or two post-op, but anything over about 100, 101, uh, we need to uh, have a phone call. Also, any brisk bleeding, everybody's going to have uh, bloody water on their dressings post-op, and that's absolutely normal. But anything that concerns you with brisk bleeding, we need to have you call the office, talk to one of the doctors, or talk to Maria. Uh, 